Welcome in to another edition of Rick and Bubba University, the podcast. We are thrilled that you are here with us. We have an ongoing series called Letters from the Audience, and and you know we discuss a lot on the weekly show. And you would think that we would exhaust everything you could possibly ever <laughs> want to know, uh, but some of you have uh, sent emails, and and we thought what it would be a lot of fun if we talk about celebrating thirty years of the show and the final year of of the weekly show. It really is interesting that we're doing a podcast of all things that features emails of all things, because as we've said on the show, one of the most historic moments I still remember is when you, Mr. Bussey, introduced me to email. I, rem- yep. I, I couldn't oh, believe yeah. it. You, yeah. you might as well have created the light bulb. <laughs> I, I, I was like, what is this? And where did these letters come from? And in the beginning, we laugh about this now, totally not an exaggeration. We They were so unique and so new bubba would bring in every single one of them yeah print them out to begin with before prior to email we were getting email messages and i don't know if that's exactly what they called them at the time on a bulletin board right yeah which you had to dial up to and it didn't have any graphics it just had letters you know and it was making some symbols out of it but we started with that and then when when i saw email i thought well good night I remember. I, I would say the day I saw the internet first time was mind boggling. Wow. wow. So Still now, a marker. So now we're going like back in time to read emails from the audience, but we're doing it on something called a podcast. Right. Which, right. remember the first time somebody said podcast to you? Oh, I know. I know. Remember the first I, time? I remember you saying something about somebody having a Zoom room. Yep. One time. I thought, a Zoom room? Zoom, what is that? What so, is oh, they Zoom do room? Zoom in there. And I'm like, well, what is Zoom? Do you realize how much technology <laughs> has changed just in the 30 years we've been doing oh, this? Oh, yes, Rick. Yes. So, uh, a lot of years. So let's get started. Uh, Bubba, uh, here's I told you this as we were about to start the podcast. A lot of historic events, obviously, people are asking about. So let, let's start with the a, a, a biggie. Uh, and, and this comes uh, out of uh, North Carolina. Uh, hey, thank you, uh, David, uh, who actually works with the Salvation Army. Uh, so David Phelps says, what was it like for you guys on the day of 9-11-01? What were your thoughts as you were live that day as history was happening in real time on a live show? Well, I remember very well we were doing the show. Mark Prater was uh, our weather guy at the time, and he was on with us. And he had mentioned that uh, there was something wrong, a plane or something had hit the World Trade Towers. And we flipped the TV on. We had a little bitty TV at the time. It was probably about 14 inches or something. It was tiny. And it sat up in the corner. And we just got all fair signals with it. And we flipped it on, and you could see a tower and smoke coming out of it. And, you know, everybody was focused on it. And they thought, well, it might be a sightseeing plane, or it might be somebody that crashed. And then there was reports it might have been a bigger plane. Well, as we're talking to Mark Prater, a second plane hits the uh, the tower, and then everything changed. Because we knew that this was a an attack of some type. And then it just got crazy from there. It, it just seems like it, it, this happened and that happened. And, uh, you know, there's more planes. And, and then the, the order to ground the planes came, which, you know, to us meant they thought there were many more of them out there. I remember during one of the commercial breaks calling Betty yeah. and telling her, I don't know where you are or what yes. you're doing with the Because our kids were just little, little yep. tea tots oh, at the yeah. time. Oh, yeah. I said, get home. Just get home and get off the roads because I don't know what's going on, but it could be a much larger attack. And they could, I mean, we, they were speculation. They could be loaded 18 wheelers on the highway too. We didn't know. We just didn't know. Well, I, you know, you, you hit all that. And, and I remember because it is different. And that, that's a good question that you're asking, David. It, it is different when something is happening in real time because yeah. you don't have any reference points whatsoever. And that swing that you just talked about, I'm not saying that it wasn't sad that someone in a small plane might have lost their way and hit the trade towers. But that's where my mind was. Right. All of us was. And yeah. and when that second plane hit, it's almost like my eyes and my mind could not properly commute, I mean, compute what I was seeing. Right. And so I remember, I think it was you that said it. Um, I'm pretty sure it was. And these are the words that are forever in my mind. Back to you calling Betty, because I did the same thing with my family. We're under attack. Yeah. And I remember hearing that, and I thought, I'm living in a historic moment 
that like I've heard people talk about like that were in London in World War II when bombs were hitting. And I remember thinking, we've been so fortunate to live in a country, you know, if you weren't here during, have to deal if you weren't here during the Civil War, there's never been any war that came onto our soil. Yeah. soil. And, and the reality of trying to grasp that I'm living in the United States of America, in Birmingham, Alabama, and my country is being attacked. We aren't somewhere else joining right. allies, attacking an enemy uh, afar. We're being attacked. And as you just pointed out, we had no idea to what level. Yeah. And we may never know. I don't think we know now because they did such a good job of getting the planes on the ground. Um, yeah, I, they could have been more. We don't know. Uh, right. There's been various studies on it. But at that time, we had no idea. And we also were trying to speculate on who it might be doing this. But I, to me, at, 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 at one point, it definitely became the Pearl Harbor moment, the no JFK doubt. Yeah. moment yeah. Uh, of our life where we didn't know what was going on. And I didn't, I really did not think that the towers would fall. I thought they would probably, you know, there was obviously going to be loss of life and tragedy. But when the first one fell, I thought, well, this is unbelievable. And then, then we we knew it was only time for the second one fail and going to be more damage. And, um, you know, you're like, wow. So this wasn't enemy planes that come in. These were people who hijacked planes on our on our own soil, who was enjoying our freedom to do this. And it it really shook everybody to the core. If you get a chance, you can go out there. It's on all of the uh, the streaming services, uh, you know, the Apple Music and all that, and you find all the Rick and Bubba best of bits. Uh, Speedy put together a compilation, and if you're listening to it, you can hear us trying to figure out what's going on in real time, yep. and eventually we get there. Yeah, uh, we we eventually kind of figure out what's going on, which then <laughs> made it even scarier. Yeah, uh, for 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 a moment, but. Um, uh, David, I will never forget that. Um, it, it was it was odd living history out, and we made the decision that day not to end the show until hours later. We just kept yeah, it was on after going lunch yeah. because you know we just felt like the country. We all just need to keep talking it out. Yeah, trying to find out what was going on, and uh, you know, as bad as it was, we were fearful it could have been a lot worse. No doubt. So, so anyway, uh, good question. Dave. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, if you want to stay with that theme, uh, here is another uh, e- email. April twenty seventh. Yeah, Robert. Yeah. So let's let's. Yeah. Uh, you want to read that one? Yeah. Uh, April twenty seventh, twenty eleven, a day that no one in our state will ever forget because of the devastation caused by the tornadoes that occurred that day. I was not able to listen to the show that day due to a power outage uh, from the morning storms. My questions are one. Were you guys able to broadcast that day? And if not, what were your memories of that day as everything was unfolding? Two, what were your thoughts seeing the footage and devastation caused by those storms? If I remember correctly, um, James Spann had been telling us for pretty much a week that we're headed to one of these Category 5 days. This this is yep. one of the or two of those days a year where conditions are going to be perfect to uh, spawn these tornadoes. Yeah. And if I remember right, what they were referring to, we actually had some tornadoes early in the morning, some smaller ones mm-hmm. that knocked out some power around. We were we were okay. We were with power. We did the show. Yeah, we did. And then that afternoon is when everything broke loose where we were. Yeah. And for me, I remember uh, sitting at home, and I was in our downstairs area, and I was watching... Um, up to that point, I don't ever remember seeing a. Well, maybe there was one in Nashville a few years ago. I don't ever remember seeing a tornado on a tower camp. No. And when Span them caught that one in Tuscaloosa, oh, man. and you could see it right at the football stadium, and the size of it, and the scope of it, and the radar was saying that it was an F five, and the debris fields were there. Um, I remember how bizarre. I, I couldn't. I couldn't leave the TV. I thought this is. You know, and then Coleman popped up. Same thing you had going on there. And uh, I'd actually was on the phone with uh, a friend of ours who was teaching class at Alabama, and they had taken oh, yeah. um, <clears throat> they taken shelter down underground of the stadium, and they were without power, no radio, nothing, and, and they were calling to see what was going on. And I said, hey, whatever you do, don't go outside. you got an F5 sitting on top of you. So it, yeah. it was amazing uh, the the – the destruction that day and it was just popping up everywhere. Robert, I, I remember, you know, Bubba and I've been talking about <clears throat> for years is 
always pay attention to people that know. So I was really locked in on Span when I, just like Bubba, I was watching him on TV. And you could see on his face, he could not, he's a pro, okay? And he's the best in the business. He's <clears throat> top of, of the business. But you could see on his face, he knew so much by what he was seeing yeah. that this was completely devastating and the loss of human life would be substantial. And he knew and it. And to see it and in he, real time. And he man. knew it. He could see the debris fields. He could see how large the tornadoes were. And uh, and I know Bubba and I both had an opportunity to tour some of the damage when it was over. You know, F2s are bad. F1s are bad. F3s mm-hmm. are bad. You, you just can't even wrap your mind around the devastations of F4s and F5s. Yeah. I mean, guys, it, these places... I remember I was with a, a, a group that went out into Pleasant Grove, which was one of the communities. And I remember the the pastor that Sherry and I were, were with got emotional. And I asked him, I said, um, are you all right? And he said, I don't know where to go. Everything that usually tells me where to turn and where, where I'm trying to take y'all, I don't know where we are. Yeah, no, no landmarks. There were no, there was no landmarks whatsoever. So yeah, that, that was a, that was a devastating uh, day as well, and uh, we certainly remember it well. We'll come you know, back. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, okay. We t- go to break. Yeah, yeah we'll come back and, and we'll finish uh, more of your emails. And we got plenty to go uh, when Rick and Bubba University the podcast continues right after this. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. This is the Rick and Bubba Show. Watch more at BlazeTV.com/slash Rick and Bubba. Rick and Bubba. Rick and Bubba. Bubba, the audience have they not fallen in love with the Raycons? I mean, they're just in love with them. I mean, the, the quality audio of these everyday earbuds is incredible and and about half the price of the other brands. So don't have people telling you that you have to pay more in order to get uh, a, a certain quality. They're as good as any earbuds out there, about half the price and better than most. And, and believe me, with their tens of thousands, five-star five reviews that agree with us, uh, the optimized gel tips, love that. I got funny shaped ears, and they're designed to fit comfortably in your ears, and they stay there. You know, if you're working out, trying to do a little better, maybe you're just going through your daily chores, uh, they don't fall, they don't they don't come out, and you know, really love the sound profiles because I like to be able to adjust if I'm listening to the thump. Oh, you got to, yeah, and or I'm listening to talk. I want to be able to get in in a right sound profile, uh, and of course, you can listen eight hours of playtime, thirty two hours of battery life. Um, so, if you want to find out more, and another option I love, if I need to be aware of what's going on around me, then I go to that option. If I don't, I go noise isolation and I just relax. So, get yours now by going to buyraycon.com slash Rick Bubba Pod. You'll get twenty percent off your Raycon order. Now, that's on top of them being about half the price, and we're going to get you free shipping. I don't know what else we got to do for you. Buyraycon.com slash Rick Bubba Pod, 20% off and free shipping, and you'll love these everyday uh, you'll love these everyday pods. So, Bubba, we're talking about letters from the audience today on Rick and Bubba University, the podcast. Rick, and back to the tornado day, too. I, I wanted to mention quickly, people are asking me a lot of times about this EF scale. And yeah, there, right. there is a technical yeah. grade that they give those based on wind speed and all that. But I, but I tell you, an easy way you can usually remember is that when you see an F four, nothing is left standing. Right. But there are piles of debris around. Right. When you get an F five, there's no debris. It cleans up after that's, itself. Yeah, it sucks weird. the pavement off the ground. Weird. It is nothing left. So weird. that's usually one of the ways you can kind of glance and halfway know what you're dealing with. All right, so historic events, scary stuff. Let's move into something incredibly light, uh, and you're going to enjoy this one. Uh, given both of you, you have a well-documented enjoyment of music. Specifically, you all seem to love the Commodores. Yes, we do. Yes. Where would you and Bubba rank Earth, Wind, and Fire and the Ohio Players? Where do you put them in category of music and style? This is from Chris. So Earth, Wind, and Fire, to me... And Ohio players, this is over in the funk category, right? Yeah, I mean, oh, this is it. And, and you're a funketeer. Yes. Uh, yes. So, so Bubba loves the funk. I too. This is where Bubba and I, we have very different musical taste until we get to funk. And then we overlap. And we now. get to funk. I mean, both of us uh, love Earth, Wind, and Fire, and we love the Ohio players. Uh, and I would rank I, them. I love the Commodores. Yeah, where would you rank them? They said, do do they rank with the Commodores with y'all? Uh, I, you know, I. 
I think it's totally unfair to, to rank those three. Right, yeah. But I would say if I had to, if you were going to hold a gun to my head, right. I would have Ohio players, Earth, Wind, and Fire, and Commodores at the top. Would you, of these three, I would go Commodores, Earth, Wind, and Fire in the two slot, Ohio players in the three slot. Yeah. But as far as I'm listening to music and these groups are coming on, they're a no turn. Yeah, there's there are no good. dollar. All good. And uh, I think that's some of the the best. And I I really really like probably because the only thing with Ohio players is I don't go as deep in their catalog. I really only go about right. two to three songs. Right. Earth, Wind, and Fire. I'm all in the catalog. Well, they were a little bit older. Yeah. They they I'm came along first, and uh, I probably was not into music as much during their heyday. Right. As I was their hits after the fact. I'm gonna do this, and this is one of those things on Rick and Bubba. But you may not have heard this, brother. There are certain topics that if you bring them up, we're going to say this one one fact every time. And when the Ohio players are brought up, I'm always going to say, my grandparents had a cabin on the Black Warrior River. And the trip to get to the Black Warrior River was, was, was a little bit of, for a kid, you feel like it's a long way away. Okay. For some reason, I don't know, I guess they were playing Birmingham, maybe. Yeah, or they, time. Or they were just on the road. And we're headed to the Black Warrior River. And, I, of course, at that time, fire is all over the radio. And I look, and I see the Ohio players double-decker for some reason. Mm-hmm. They did one of those old English double-decker buses with the Ohio players all over it. And I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I, I think I saw it on I-20 one time. Did you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so that was kind of one of those moments. So, yeah. All right, continuing, Bubba, more letters. Uh, he had a P.S., Rick. Will RBU continue beyond the end of the show? And that is no. Well, now, no. wait a minute. Uh, I, I may, if Bubba negotiates, he may want to put together a podcast with me. I'm willing to listen. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, RBU, yeah, that, that would be strictly a Rick and Bubba show thing. Yep. Yep. Uh, Bubba, we, have we covered this before? Who is Roger Lewis? Uh, you know, it, it seems was, like we've covered that. Who played the part of Roger Lewis? Well, it's Roger Lewis. Right. And I love this. My guess is Pat Gray. Uh, you know, Pat, who's with the Glenn Beck. Yes. Yeah, they, they're yeah. saying I, we laugh at Pat Gray because that was also yeah. a meteorologist when we were growing up. Yeah. Pat's funny though. Yeah, but it's not Pat Gray. No, uh, it was actually uh, Eric Hastings. Yeah, Eric, and yeah. he was the producer for WABC in New York when we borrowed a studio from him, and we started up a friendship. And he was telling us some characters that he did, and we uh, put him on the air. He, but we became pretty good friends. He actually came down and stayed with us a couple of times. Yeah. And um, uh, really, really cool guy. He got out of broadcasting and went into some other things and really didn't have time to do all the shenanigans we did. But we certainly love the time he was on. So, Kathy, let me think. All right, Bubba. So you said, was this when we went to New York for the a- XFL to begin uh, okay, with? Okay, it wasn't the book tour. So we went. We uh, went there first, I think, with the XFL. You're, you're right. And we used Rush's studio. Yes, that is correct. And Rush Limbaugh, it's the only time we got to see the golden microphone. We have a picture in our office of us there. And Eric was the producer. He was speedy for the WABC morning show, which was uh, Curtis and... Uh, Kobe? Uh, it was, it was, you what know... Was his name? The long uh, guy. He was the... The defense attorney that defended yeah. all the, 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 the whack jobs in New name? York. Curtis Silva was the guardian angel. Yeah, was his and name Kobe or something like that? It, it, close to that. Something like that. Close to that. Yeah. But they did a morning show, and he was their producer. Yeah. And he had to accommodate us to some degree getting on the air. And anyway, we became friends. And we met Kit Carson. Yes. Uh, is that the time? Yeah. Well, that was... Uh, or was that when we were there doing a book tour? You know, we went there two or three times yeah. and, and borrowed a, a studio. They were very generous to do that. But I will say this. And look, Bubba and I just have to deal with it, okay? We have to face the reality of it. We pitched Kit Carson, who was the <laughs> number one man on the Rush Limbaugh staff. He was his manager. He was yeah. his manager, that we wanted to be one of the fill-in hosts. That request was denied. We did. It, we, it, we, it we did got not, zero. It, it got a zippo. The gate never opened, and it never happened, and it <laughs> broke our heart, especially when we heard some <laughs> filling hosts that we thought we were better than. All right, we'll come back. More of Rick and Bubba University. The podcast <laughs> letters from the audience continues right after this. All right, so we're all kind of tired of sending our money to these uh, ridiculous left wing companies, but you know what you say. Until I see something better or I find another option, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Well, when it comes to your wireless, uh, good news, Patriot Mobile, uh, America's only Christian conservative wireless provider, 
Uh, let me tell you, they do an outstanding job. They offer dependable nationwide coverage, so you're not, not dropping quality, uh, giving you the ability to access all three major networks, okay? So you're, not, you're there, which means you get the same coverage you've been accustomed to, but you're not funding the left. When you switch to Patriot Mobile, you're sending the message that you support free speech, religious freedom, sanctity of life, Second Amendment, military, veterans, first responders, all heroes there. Uh, it's 100% U.S.-based customer service team. Thank you. Uh, making the switching easy. Uh, you can keep your number, keep your phone, or you can upgrade if you want to, and the team will help you find the best plan that's best for you. Let's go now. PatriotMobile.com slash Rick Bubba. PatriotMobile.com slash Rick Bubba, or you can call it. 972 Patriot. That's 972 Patriot. Get free activation using the offer code Rick Bubba. Make the switch today. Bubba, it's letters from the audience today on Rick and Bubba University, the podcast. We continue. We got a good one here, Rick, with a lot of miscellaneous questions. Okay, so good. let's let's work through that. Right. Um as a lifelong Braves fan, okay. during your contract with Turner South, do the guys have a favorite Braves personality or player they got to meet or interact with or a favorite story during that time? Oh, I love that time. Um, I would say the whole Turner thing was really cool because even though Turner South was like a, a little sister in the whole big Turner broadcast thing, mm -hmm. we got access to those to those we uh, facilities. And uh, getting to go to spring training with the Braves was huge for me uh, when I got to get out on the mound oh, and throw. unbelievable. And that, by the way, that video was in that uh, video dump the gentleman sent us not too long ago. It has me out there pitching on the uh, mound. I love it. Now, to me, I was really winding up and throwing it. Of course you but were. But when you look at the video, it looks like an old guy out there tossing. That is, and, but that's uh, all right. But but to get to go and do that and then have Terry Pendleton come out and Glenn Hubbard, who I watched growing up, stand behind me, have a conversation with me while I'm throwing, watch me throw a knuckleball and ask me if I wanted to throw some BP, which I would, no way I would get oh, in front man. of those guys oh, yeah. with a screen or not. Um, was really, really cool. And, and that was a lot of fun. I also, Rick, remember uh, that was, there was a lot of great moments, but I remember getting to go to Turner's headquarters over on Techwood and do promos. And that the day cool. we went in there and did the promos and I mean, it was, you know, pro stuff and oh, yeah. big time. And we went over there with several of the interns and we did this whole production and they used that, those video clips and everything. And I, I've always thought that was really, really cool. Yeah. I will say this about the Turner South days and it continues to like a few weeks ago. Okay. That may have been the platform that God ordained that took this show to another level. Uh, when we were on the Turner South days, I have run into so many people because, I mean, when you talk about the radio network, which we're very thankful for, you're, you're limited to whatever that station covers. Well, Turner South gave us access to people that didn't have radio affiliates. This is before all the streaming, before all that. And you're sitting there on cable TV, and, and, and it really took us to a whole nother place. And so many people found the show, and they'll talk about it. I found you on Turner South. I found you on I hear that. Everywhere, yeah, yeah, and and so and then to the Braves part, I, I'll just say those were some of the most fun years we had. I mean, that was when that moment when you're thinking about which kind of gets into your next question, but you start thinking about okay, this show's going somewhere. I mean, it, it's happening, and so but back to the Braves, since you're a Braves fan, getting to call the innings, yeah, with Don that, Sutton that, and, and Pete Van Weeren. I yeah. mean, yeah, I had that, that down too. That that was, that was huge. That was gigantic, and I don't remember because you were out pitching. <laughs> with Terry Pendleton and Glenn Hubbard, and they put that young first baseman up there with me yeah, who who was a lefty, and he could rip it. What was his name? Uh, you know what? I was thinking I about that, and yeah. he, he had been struggling. He had. And uh, you gave him a pep talk about getting after it. And, and he just started and it, ripping And he, like, hit a home run that afternoon. Yeah, and he just started fun? ripping them. And then he got kind of, you know how they're kind Adam, of. Adam, Adam, Adam. Adam, somebody help Adam, me. Adam, his name is Adam. Somebody help Dog us. Doggone it, Adam. See what happens. I when think you've he been got doing traded to the Marlins, years. maybe. Uh, but anyway, uh, we'll we'll figure it out. And we'll talk Bubba, about it later. one more before we're done with this and go to the next question. One more is uh, when uh, when we were sitting there because we also got good tickets because of Turner South. Oh yeah. And you and I are sitting in really a kill zone. If if if, if anybody fouls one off in our faces, and we're sitting there and on deck 
Do you remember this? Yes. Oh yeah. And and so we're we're and, and the Braves need a hit here. Uh, and uh, with pitcher, Greg Maddox. Greg Maddox is standing on deck because they want. I leave. mean, we're in the we're in the second row. Right. No one is in front of us on the front row, so we have access to him. He literally is a baseball we bat length him. away we from can touch it. Him. Yeah. And and he's on deck, and Bubba and I, are, I mean, we're ready. I mean, that we need this. And, and that, they love they walk a guy to to bring Maddox <laughs> to the plate with the bases loaded. And we say to Maddox, "Hey, make him regret that. Hey, we we need you right here." And he finally just. Finally, looks at us and went, "Yeah, right." <laughs> Fuck, I'm gonna touch it because that Burnett kid was throwing. Yeah, and he was throwing 101. He, he yeah. was throwing smoke, yeah. and he looked at us like, "Hey, I appreciate your enthusiasm, guys, but I think we all know how this is gonna yeah. end." Yeah, it ain't gonna be good. Uh, Adler, did you find the brave we're talking about? I, I'm so bad at baseball, but is it Adam LaRoche? Yes, yes, that's it. Good job, that's buddy. It. I'd see him. Good job. Uh, that that was it. All right. Yeah, he's a super nice guy. All right. So the next question. Uh, let's see. Uh, same email. This yeah. from Russell Moore. Yeah. <clears throat> I was shocked that Russell Moore would email us I after know, our conversation we had with him I, on there. It's odd, isn't it? Yep. At what point did you guys know the show had sustainability? Uh, a specific interview, or when y'all snagged the first syndication contract? You know, the word sustainable is a tricky one in there you yeah, know, yeah, because, you know, yeah. I don't know that you and I ever felt like, okay, this we're, we're cooking now. We'll never look back. I think – so sustainability, us thinking 31 years. I, yeah, we were thinking 30 days yeah. to begin with. I, I think for me, uh, I thought we were having fun, and I hope that everybody else was having fun. Mm-hmm. Um, I think when the, the first, uh, contract came in that somebody wanted us both on it on the commercial, um, I I think about that. I think about when, you know, uh, the hammer said, you know, y'all do the show together Yes, and, uh, you know, you, you could, you could kind of feel the buzz happening and, and those were excitable times and, and enjoyable when you, you saw those little markers, you know, ratings would come out or you would have phone calls from a new area or, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. or something. And, uh, you know, people said, you know, I used to listen to Mark and Brian, I'm enjoying you guys and, Ooh. you know, things like that just, oh. just, it really fired you up. I think, I think for me, and I agree with all that, I think for me is when when it all kind of you can't have nothing because all these things Bubba mentioned we thought hey man this is it and then all of a sudden we find out they're gonna fire us yeah, yeah so so we almost had to have a rebound and for me coming off that rebound is when another broadcast company paid both of us the most money we'd ever even we couldn't even imagine it and that and then you think okay well now we got we got to come through and standing in that general manager's office. And them waiting on the first ratings after they had paid us a good contract. Yeah. And it started coming off as that we were, the show was number one in every age bracket in both genders, male and female. That's for me when I said, yeah. okay, so what they just paid us, we're worth it. And so they're not going to give us any grief about that. So that should buy us some sustainability. Right. Buy, you know, us, buy us time to the next Yeah. Time. So all right, we'll, we'll come back. He, he's got a third question, and then we'll get yeah. into some other stuff. When, when Rick and Bubba University, the podcast continues right after this. All right. So when we're talking about Manscaped, uh, you know, Bubba and I love these products. You know, we don't all – I mean, let me tell you, because have we stolen – Stuffs for you know uh, that or re- 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 for women we have from time to time back before Manscape w- came along, and but you know it, the the problem that you find is that a lot of hygiene products up till Manscape really were were made with females in mind or are not thinking about how men uh, need stuff that's designed for the way we're made. Uh, Manscape uh, just says look. Uh, everything we got there for a man and, and hygiene for men from head to toe. Okay. And their products are just fantastic. Now, 10 million men worldwide trust manscaped and, and we are two of them. A matter of fact, I just got my beard shampoo, uh, and the combo shampoo and conditioner in the mail just in the last few days because I want to be sure I don't run out. It's the best products I've ever used for my hair and for my beard. And I also love, let me tell you something, this Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra Trimmer that they just come out with, fantastic. Next generation skin safe blade heads, classic trim. I got a new foil blade. It, it can smooth wherever 
you may need that. It even has an LED spotlight, okay? The Beard Hedger, the best beard product I've ever used to keep the beard neat. Now, some of you are watching this podcast saying, Rick, are you not using it? I, I'm going to plan, plan on using it today. Uh, beard Hedger Pro Kit is a great one, okay? So why don't you go right now, get 20% off and free shipping, use the code RICK20, RICK20, and get 20% off at manscaped.com. All right, manscaped.com, 20% off. Make sure that you are properly groomed, men, head to toe. All right, so Bubba, we're continuing with letters from the audience. Now, I know Russell Moore, strange that we got a, an email from him, uh, is, is, and I know it's not that Russell, <laughs> uh, has three questions, and we got two of them. Now we got the third. Uh, did any of your children have a boyfriend, girlfriend, significant other back off because they didn't want to be talked about, analyzed on the show? Hmm. I have my own kids that did not want to be talked about yeah, analyzed yeah, on the show yeah. anymore when they reached a certain age. Uh, if that happened, <clears throat> I, I, wasn't, I wasn't aware of it, were you? No, no. Yeah. I, I, but I, I knew mine would shield some information from me from time to time because they didn't want it on the air. And uh, I had to, uh, you know, we, we had a kind of a sit-down meeting where we said, look, some things are going to be family business. and. Yep. If you don't want that aired, uh, and there's there's a legitimate reason, um, that's fine because it involves other people who didn't ask to be on the air. But I, I don't ever remember anything major, really. Mm -hmm. Well, I, there's no doubt that my family has made it crystal clear that I'm a little quick to go to the air. Right, right. Uh, now but, I f but, mine feel that way too. Yeah, good. but I, guys, slow news day, huh? Dad? Do, you, do you ever tell them y'all don't know what it's like? Yeah. I mean, we right. come in here with 16 segments to fill. And a lot of the stuff people love the most is the stuff that happens yeah. to us in our personal yeah, lives. Yeah, I agree. And so, but, but, but we can't just make those things happen. But when they do <laughs> happen, I'm sorry, we have to have them. You know, recently, Bub, on this particular topic, though, I, there was no pushback, but I did kind of forget, you know, when, you know, when you, when you started, you know, I've got two sons that got married. Mm -hmm. Okay. So these aren't girlfriends. These aren't, these are, these are wives. And of course I've nicknamed, you know, one of them you know, camtastic. Mm -hmm. And I did have not to the level this guy's asking, but I did have mm -hmm. a little bit of, Hey dad, did, did you just take her and just go on the air calling her camtastic? <laughs> uh, and, and I was like, yeah. And he goes, right. do you, do you want me, you think that's, you want to, you should maybe ask her about that. And I'm like, no, I honestly, buddy, I'm just shooting you straight. I didn't think about that. I thought she would think it was precious and mild. So I, I think that if there's anything that's going on, I think you hit on it. It's been kept from us. Yeah. We, yeah. we didn't know about it. I didn't know about it. Uh, here's one looking forward, Rick. Uh, I'm curious about when the last day of the show will be. Will it be 10? Well, I'm sorry. Will it be 12, 2024 at the big year ender? It will actually be the week before that. It will be 12, 13. Is it, oh, you got to be kidding. We're Friday going, the 13th. We're going this on Friday. <laughs> Friday the 13th. Are you kidding me? Nope. No, Friday the thirteenth will yeah. be the in December will be the last day. Okay, well there there you go. I did not know that we had picked Friday the thirteenth. I knew it was the thirteenth. I guess I should have thought that is a Friday because the big year ender usually is. Uh, here's here's one too. And Bubba, this comes out of the world of camo. Uh, who has killed the most deer, and who has killed the biggest deer? Uh, said I've been listening since two thousand two. Thank you. Uh, and this is from James. All right, so there's no way to know that. I mean, the, the most. I mean, I'm just going to tell you, Bubba and I, we have, we have put a lot of venison on the ground between us. I mean, a lot. Yeah, I, I don't know that it, you could even have a competition for that. That's. Uh, I mean, it's. It, we have, and we both have had some pretty nice deer. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know far as the biggest one. Did per they se. score yours? That Dream Ranch deer that was so phenomenal. Um, Did they score the, it? You know, I don't remember if we did or not. If it is, I, I wrote it on the back of the mount. It's uh, that's a. It was like a fifteen point. That deer, was a phenomenal yeah. deer. And you've had several big ones too. So yeah. I, you know, we look at it more of an art form than a pure competition. Yeah, we've never. Yeah, and it's weird because we're dudes and we both play a little ball. Yep. You would think everything we do would be a competition, but that really <laughs> never has. I, I think we just love it so much and. And it's been so much fun and, and so relaxing. But, yeah, Bubba has killed great deer. Um, I guess for me, just because I don't know why they scored it, but they did. I, I shot one that was 158. Now, I don't know whether any of the 
I don't think so because we were kind of shooting for them coals. Right. Some of our Texas deer. That's, that's a pretty good yeah with Moultrie. Good deer. But I would say the one you killed is every bit of that though. I mean that uh, that that that's a, that was a day. Well, they're they're all good. They all were worthy of being hung on the wall. So uh, again, I, I I don't know that we have a clear cut winner per se, but we have both had a lot of fun and had had a lot of success over the years. Well, I tell you who shot the most deer in one sitting. That's Don Juan DeMarco Williams. Yeah, yeah. Now that yeah. one we can share with you. Yeah, well, kind of. Yeah, <laughs> well, <That's>, uh, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was a bizarre day. <laughs> well, I'll never forget that. <laughs> Man, they just kept coming out. Well, we 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 trained him. We were excited to go. He'd never hunted, and uh, the one thing we forgot to tell him was how many deer you can shoot at one time. You just didn't think you had to cover that. Yeah, didn't you, think you, just, you had to yeah, cover that. You, you think God after love one or two, he'd stop. I almost quit hunting after that. It was, it was a rough scene, Rick. It was. I was first on the scene. I could not believe what I was seeing. Yeah. And, um, and uh, hmm. you know, I don't know why deer, when they hear a gunshot, don't run. That, that was the strangest thing to yeah, me. But yeah, they, they, that fit, they were so far back in the woods, I don't mm-hmm. think they'd ever seen a human. No. So they didn't pay no, any attention. No. The, re- the reset and coming back out to hit that green field again, not yeah. a good idea. Yeah. <clears throat> not a good idea. Uh, Bubba, more letters. Let's see. Uh, we got one here again looking forward. Bubba, what are your plans after the show ends? Currently sitting here today, I have no plans. <laughs> None? None at all. Except, so, except uh, the full-size modeling. Yeah, except maybe for uh, oversized modeling. I think that's obviously I've been gifted in that area, and uh, that's something that I will have to to look into. But no, I don't, don't have really any plans yet. We're we're trying to get our uh, our lake house rebuilt yes. that the tornado hit, and it has, it has absolutely been a full-court press Oof. for the last month. Uh, trying to get this done within the year time frame. And when you're dealing with insurance and when oh, you're dealing with deadlines and rental houses, oh, it, uh, it even gets more oh. complicated. So that's all we've been focused on right now because, um, you know, really when you, you have something like that, and we've been very blessed to have it to begin with, um, at this point we can't sell it and we can't live in it. So it's an <laughs> asset that's like a donkey hung over a fence. You know, you can't get off of it. So we got to get to, we got to get past that. And hopefully we will be there by the end of March. So that's our goal. And we're, and we're, we're progressing good right now with a little luck. We could, you know, be back in there. Now our yard is not done and it may be some time before uh, that's done, uh, but we'll, we're, we're working on it slowly, but surely. Are, are you and still, then, yeah. then I'm going to have to figure out what we're going to do after I file for unemployment. <laughs> well, let me ask you this. Do you still plan on sleeping for two months? You did say for two months uh, I, you were going to sleep late. I, I think I may sleep to lunch, okay. drug assisted, <laughs> and just try to get out of this awful zombie mode of getting up in the middle of the night. What does it feel like to actually have eight hours? To yeah, hours I sleep? mean, you know, can I be a nice person again? <laughs> can I actually socialize with people and carry on the sentence and, you know, not look like I'm droopy? Right, and everybody and, and be able to find out what yeah. people do after seven p.m. Yeah. All right, we'll come back. We got. Uh, we'll finish up. Maybe one more letter. Maybe two. Uh, when we come back on Rick and Bubba University, the podcast. All right, so we're part of Blaze TV. They 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 have this uh, on uh, on you can you can watch it on Blaze TV. This podcast, uh, of course, Blaze Originals has really been a hit. And if you're a subscriber to Blaze TV, you're good. Uh, you get this. But if not. Here's an opportunity. The latest installment is Texas versus the feds. Bubba, do you remember when we had a standoff, federal agents, and, and uh, we had Abbott. <laughs> Texas and, versus the gov. What happened? Well, <laughs> uh, they're going to tell you on this uh, latest installment uh, because uh, Jason Buttrell and the, the Blaze original team, they get on the road, and uh, with the, they've got the convoy called Take Our Border Back. They're going to the front line of the crisis, and they're going to find out what really was happening during Governor Greg Abbott's fight against federal agents. And the team's going to reveal the story that mainstream media wouldn't tell you. If you'd like to see this in any Blaze original, you need to subscribe. Uh, Go to therealbordercrisis.com, use the code BORDER, and get $30 off your Blaze TV Plus subscription. That's the real bordercrisis.com. Use the code border. And in that subscription, you also get Rick and Bubba content. Rick and Bubba University, the podcast. Bubba, we, we have maybe time for one, maybe two more. Well, uh, he, here's one we get all the time, Rick. Okay. Will y'all be revealing the details of the Gunnersville Treaty before the end of the show? And on a similar question, Here will there go. be more revelation on the Willie and Wanda story at some point? Bubba, we just can't. 
Uh, I mean, uh, are you willing? Some things will have to go to the grave, my friends. Are you willing to do Gunnersville Treaty? <laughs> no, no, boy, you didn't even you didn't even hesitate <laughs> no, on that. Did you? Oh no, boy, that too. no. We were much younger and so full young, of foolishness. So There's really foolish. no need to go. I don't see any so good foolish. coming out of that. Willie and Wanda, no. y'all. Th- let me tell uh-uh. you what this is like. People ask this all the time. Let's just say you are a responsible gun owner, okay? <laughs> and you got your gun out and you're cleaning your gun. And let's say it, it accidentally discharges and it sends a bullet by your ear. Right. But you're okay. Right. Okay. Nobody's hurt. Nobody's hurt. But you realize how close you were to a total calamity. Right. You're not really wanting to get that gun out and play with it no. after that. No. Uh, so, you know, it's kind of that way. I know it's been a long time, but Mm-mm. y'all, this is, this is sleeping dogs lie. The people who made that sentence, who yeah, made yep. that little right. saying, this is, this you was... Don't. Perfect for that. Bubba and I are okay. We survived it. Yeah. And I mean, that's all that matters. Yeah. It's like asking a, a dog who'd been hit by a car, when's the next time you can go out and check that highway again? Yeah. He's not yeah, going to. Yeah. Guys, do y'all realize, I know it's funny to y'all, and I'm so thankful for that, aren't you, Bubba? But I tell people this all the time. You should have lived it. It wasn't as funny. <laughs> Living it was 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 it, nightmarish. It got a lot of fun. It got a, little, a whole lot funnier five to ten years after it happened. That's right. Uh, when Adler, we finally told it. Adler, help us here, uh, and he can chime in. Someone is asking this. It's Betsy. How does Adler put together the daily Best of Show podcast? It seems to be out really quick when the show is over. Does he plan during the show which parts he's going to use? That's that Best of Hour. They they don't know how you get it out so fast. Well, um, I've been chopping down the four-hour show into about a one-hour show since I started working here. So that helps. A lot of reps. Um, and as I write it down, I'll capture every segment as it happens, and I'll like write, you know, hour one, segment one, you know, that's the beginning. I always use that one that, the, when you know you setting up the show. Yes, that's that sets up a lot of what the guys are going to talk about. And then as we go f- through, it'll be like hour four, segment two, and I'll call that troll. And a lot of times I'll call it like troll good or troll use. Just you know, just make make notes as we go through the show, and then once the show's over, I look at kind of everything I have, throw that together, chop it down, and I will say that um, I've learned shortcuts in the editing program, and the more you can learn those shortcuts, that makes ten clicks turn into two two touches of a key, and that really helps a lot too. But just doing it for so long, uh, every day has really helped speed that up as well. Okay. Uh, Bubba, three minutes. Uh, you think we can get three one minutes more? You got one. You got a up? short one. We could get in maybe uh, three minutes. There's uh, there's there's several here. Uh, Rick, a longtime listener since 1988, listened to you when you guys were on Q104. Even skipped school one day to attend a remote back in the day. You had hair and Rick and Bubba rock sweet mullets. My oh. question is, what happened to Helium Boy, oh, and boy. is he still alive? Thanks for the last. Hi, and, Bubba. And that's from Todd Patton. Hi, oh, Todd. What's up, Bubba? <laughs> Helium Boy's in the house. I ain't going nowhere, Bubba. I mowed these chops. Uh, so, yeah, we, we don't bring it out that much. Uh, when well, I, it strains your voice to do that. Yeah, when, right? when, when, I, you know, when I had the vocal cord problem, Helium Boy was over. I mean, yeah. we buried him. Yep. And as my vocal cords healed, thank you, Lord, as my vocal cords healed, that those secondary vocal cords were able to produce. You know, I lost being able to do Joe Carwash mm-hmm. and Healing Boy, uh, but both of them came back. So Healing Boy, it, it, he usually appears on the big year ender. Uh, and, uh, he, <laughs> for a brief moment. For a brief moment, yep. but, but he is uh, alive and well. And I will tell you, the Healing Boy thing was such a part of Bubba and I in the beginning. And, you know, there's a lot of things on this show that y'all don't understand that built the years of the show that were things that Bubba and I just did for each other to make each other laugh. You know, and yeah. and then you start thinking, okay. And then you think, well, is this character too weird? What are we doing? Well, how do you even come up with a character Helium Boy? And really all it was is I was able to do that voice and I didn't know what to do with it. So we just created some way to use it. And uh, and I was using it, you know, when, when I was doing the show by myself. And uh, and when Bubba and I started doing that, I, look, if I can get Bubba laying in the floor of a limousine and, and, he's, and he's punching me in the side of the leg to stop. Yeah, because I couldn't breathe. Well, I ain't going to stop doing that. Yeah, that you was know? a good one. That <laughs> I mean, was a good one. So, unfortunately, I think Helium Boy is alive and well. Yes, he, he lives among us. Um, Rick, one more, and I, I can't find the exact email, but when I was looking at it a minute ago, it was a question about the biggest handle we had been in. <sighs> Uh, I will say this. I don't know if it was absolutely the biggest handle, but I thought we were going to be fired. 
uh, oh. was the day we were doing a remote from the Gadsden Mall during lunch. Oh, Bubba. And the show had kind of took off, and it was doing good. And um, we we were at a PETA uh, eating establishment. Yeah, where you get PETAs. And mm. we had announced the lunch special. Yeah. And I wanted to <laughs> get through it. I wanted to invite... <laughs> Invite the invite the pita eaters to come on down. Well, I mispronounced that just a little bit. Yes, she did. And we got tickled, much like we did then. And we were trying to hold it together, and there was just no way. And Amy Mason was back at the studio, yes. and she said, "Did you just invite who I think you invited to lunch?" And we're laughing. We can't get it together. We try to go back on the air to do can't, another can't break. Can't even do a show. And it's just, can't it's just it. dead air. Dead air. And you hear us <laughs> can't speak in the background. Can't speak. After about an hour. Well, and then finally we, we got back on and you made a comment I'm sorry. that sent us over again. I'm sorry. Not good. I we're well, going to share it. So Bub and I find we really think we're gonna be fired today if we don't get this together. Yeah. Okay. We're not far enough in that we have any clout whatsoever. And Bubba's like, we got to get this together. We got to get it together. Come on, we can do it. I said, all right, we're good. So she sends it. Let's go back to Rick and Bubba down at whatever. This is before Greek food became all the craze. Right. It was some of the early Greek restaurants. And we get back on there, and I said, well, Bubba, it's good to be down here again. I don't know about you, but I find myself anxiously looking at the door to see if we got any takers on the lunch special. And then we lost And then that was it. And we just, ah! And we start screaming, and then we literally start unplugging stuff, yeah. and we just ended the remote. We just packed up, and uh, we told the owner we're sorry that uh, things got a little out of control, and uh, I-, I figured that that would be it. That was it. We did because we, we were getting yeah. a lot of calls yeah. uh, that were listening to it, and we're trying to figure out what was going on. Some of them heard the first initial yep. mistake, and then some heard us trying to get out of it after. I I really I remember laughing so hard that I was out of breath and I thought I was going to pass out. I mean, I, I remember getting woozy yeah. and like I had to go outside yeah. and I got down on all fours and just was trying to, yeah. to get air in my lungs and stay, but it, Unbelievable. I don't know why it got so funny at that. It's just one of those times That's, that yeah. something said that, and it wasn't just right, right. and it hit everybody funny Golly. and, and I could not breathe. I literally could not breathe. So many memories. Thanks for your your thirty one years yeah, worth your questions. We'll try to do it again before the year's over. You can send those to Speedy at RickandBubba.com. Thanks for being with us on this edition of Rick and Bubba University, the podcast.